thought it was about time this channel finally addressed the FDA's recent announcement regarding a US ban on the sale of NMN as a dietary supplement, as well as Amazon's upcoming March the 13th ban on the sale of all NMN products. We'll also be discussing the infamous Metro Biotech, Dr. David Sinclair, and how we might still be able to maintain access to NMN should the FDA ruling actually be enforced. And lastly, we'll talk about some supplement options that can effectively directly replace NMN. First, let me say that in my opinion, the FDA has completely lost the plot here. When things get to the point where a government department thinks it has the right to remove public access to a highly beneficial health promoting compound, one that's already naturally produced in our own body and is even present in several foods, then we really have to start questioning their motives. So you might well ask the question, how can the FDA legally deprive consumer access to NMN? Well, it all comes down to one thing, and that's the preclusion provision of Section 201 of the Federal Food, Drug and Cosmetic Act. Officials created this provision to protect the commercial interests of pharmaceutical companies developing new drugs. Now here's a brief summary of what this preclusion provision actually states. It states that the term dietary supplement may not include any ingredient that's been approved as a new drug or any ingredient authorized for an investigation as a new drug for which substantial clinical investigations have been instituted and made public. But this only applies if the ingredient in question was not marketed as a dietary supplement prior to its approval for investigation as a new drug. Of course, the reality is this law only benefits the pharmaceutical industry, not the health conscious supplement consumer. Now, the only good news is that unless the FDA actually decides to go out and exercise enforcement, it doesn't actually require that companies pull the ingredient in question. So perhaps using the word ban with regard to NMN may at this point at least be somewhat premature. But here's where things seem to get a little, shall we say, shady. Because between the summer of 2020 and the spring of 2022, five companies submitted new dietary ingredient notifications for NMN. Four of the five were rejected, but the rejections were unrelated to NMN being under investigation as a new drug. Now, the one company that did receive approval for NMN was Syncozymes. In June of 2022, Syncozymes officially received a confirmation letter from the FDA confirming that their NMN ingredients have successfully passed the new dietary ingredient approval. The acknowledgement letter to Syncozymes confirmed that their NMN could be lawfully sold as a dietary supplement in the US. But that all changed recently when the FDA concluded in the fall of 2022 that in light of new information, NMN was excluded from the definition of a dietary supplement due to it first being investigated as a drug. Well, that's somewhat confusing. Now, I've searched online, but I can find no evidence or information available from the FDA regarding the date when this prior investigation of NMN as a drug is supposed to have begun. Doesn't that seem a little strange to you that the FDA wouldn't release this information? Because as far as I'm aware, NMN has been sold and marketed as a generally recognized as safe grass certified supplement for several years now. So any new drug investigation qualifying for a legitimate preclusion provision must we assume have been initiated quite some time ago. Anyway, now let's take a look at the company in question that's currently investigating NMN as a new drug. It's recently come to light that on December the 21st, 2021, Metro International Biotech, a pharmaceutical company co-founded by none other than Dr. David Sinclair, sent a letter to the FDA requesting that they implement the preclusion provision of the aforementioned act with regard to NMN. The obvious intent being to have the sale of NMN as a dietary ingredient prohibited in the US. What we know about Metro Biotech is that with Sinclair's involvement, it's been developing a proprietary pharmaceutical version of beta-NMN known as MIB626, which they claim is more effective than beta-NMN. Now, I can only find records of three investigations by Metro Biotech involving NMN and MIB626. A study first posted on March 25, 2021 involved testing the safety of MIB626 in adults with Friedrich's ataxia. Another investigation posted on September 9, 2021 involved MIB626 treatment in adults with COVID-19 and kidney injury. 
and a third study posted on September 10, 2021 looked at NMN's effect on Alzheimer's disease. Now let's be clear that Metro Biotech would appear to be developing MIB626 for the treatment of specific diseases, not for use as a health supplement. So why the heck have they taken action which they know could deny healthy individuals access to NMN? Taking a natural health supplement in order to help prevent age-related diseases should be our fundamental right. And in my opinion, no one should be given the power to take that away from us, especially not a pharmaceutical company or a government department. Now call me suspicious, but why over the past couple of years has David Sinclair spent so much time promoting the benefits of NMN with countless appearances on so many YouTube channels if all along he knew that Metro Biotech were intent on denying us access to the supplement by seeking to have it reclassified as a pharmaceutical? Now I don't know about you, but my trust in this guy is beginning to wane somewhat. What makes even less sense is that NMN was never a threat to Metro Biotech. It's a health supplement, not a pharmaceutical. Unlike MIB626, if it's ever approved, and that could take years, NMN can't be prescribed by a doctor to treat a specific disease. Nor can you get it on your medical insurance. It doesn't compete with MIB626 in any way. So it begs the question, why would Metro Biotech seek to deny public access to one of the best health supplements currently available? especially as their website claims their company mission is to enable longer, healthier lives. Really? I think Sinclair needs to step up and answer this one, because as things stand, his reputation is in danger of sinking deeper than the Mariana Trench. In response to the FDA's ruling, Amazon have announced that they're banning the sale of all NMN products on their platform from March the 13th. In an email to sellers, Amazon stated, if you want to sell NMN on Amazon, you must show that you're approved by the FDA for over-the-counter sales. There's not much chance of that happening, is there? But then let's not forget that we've seen this all before on Amazon, when the FDA tried to ban NAC supplements. However, following industry intervention, the FDA later rescinded its decision, instead implementing an enforcement discretion policy, following which NAC supplements once again became available on the platform. However, Amazon blocking the sale of NMN on their site might actually be a good thing. There are so many fake NMN products being sold on the platform that buyers are regularly being ripped off with underdosed impure products, some containing no NMN at all. So it's goodbye to NMN and Amazon for now at least, and I for one won't be shedding a tear. Okay, so here's the deal. Regarding sellers based in the US, that all depends on whether or not the FDA actually decide to enforce the ruling. It could possibly be that we see the same thing happen as with NAC supplements, with the FDA bowing to industry pressure and implementing an enforcement discretion policy, which would effectively allow the continued sale of NMN as a dietary ingredient. This of course would be our best case scenario. However, that aside, as far as I'm aware, most every vendor has indicated that in the meantime, they intend to continue to sell NMN products in spite of the current FDA ruling. The reality is we'll simply need to wait and see how this all pans out. But if you are concerned, there's certainly been no harm in stocking up with NMN as a precautionary measure. Of course, the FDA ruling has no effect on non-US retailers, and NMN will still be available outside the US. Indeed, several overseas vendors, including the UK-based company Do Not Age, currently ship to the US, where they already have a large NMN customer base. Now, as far as I'm aware, these non-US retailers that currently ship to the States have made no indication that they intend to stop doing so which potentially leaves that avenue of supply open, even in the event of US retailers being excluded. And if you're looking to make some great savings, here's a 10% discount code for the Do Not Age third-party lab-tested NMN product that I use. It's available in both pure powder and filler-free capsule versions, with guaranteed express delivery straight to your door. And you can make even bigger savings by using the subscription service, and you can still use my 10% discount code on top of the subscription price. So let's imagine a worst case scenario where NMN became totally unavailable to those residing in the US. Are there actually any worthwhile alternatives to NMN? Well, it really only comes down to two products and that's Apigenin and NR. So first, let's take a look at NR. NR, short for nicotinamide riboside, is an almost identical molecule to NMN. In fact, it's really just NMN without the phosphate group. Now there's been quite a bit of debate regarding which is more effective 
And if you're interested, there's already a video on the channel that pits the two against each other. Now, I personally favor NMN for several reasons. However, if I lost access to NMN, I'd immediately buy NR as a replacement. Apigenin is an amazing supplement, and I urge you to watch my full Apigenin video when you can. But briefly, Apigenin functions to inhibit the enzyme CD38, the result of which is a very significant increase in your body's circulating NAD plus levels. If you're already using NMN or NR, then it's actually extremely beneficial to use Apigenin concurrently, and you'll find the reasons for this explained in the video. So that's the current state of play. Now, I'm actually very optimistic that the FDA will see sense and implement an enforcement discretion policy, allowing NMN to continue to be sold as a dietary ingredient. Only time will tell, of course, but whatever the outcome, not only will we still have access to NR and Apigenin, I personally can't see the overseas NMN suppliers curtailing US testing shipments anytime soon. Many thanks for watching, and lastly, as always, take care, be healthy, and see you all again soon.